What is going on, YouTube fam, or family, or viewers, haters, lovers? Anyways, I am back. months maybe longer I don't even know anyways we are in the 2016 Camaro SS wanted to give you my driving impressions on these uh, or on the car I should say I know you've probably seen a million of reviews uh, it was Motor Trends car of the year there's plenty of people that have review channels that do a much better job than I ever could uh, anyways I just wanted to give you a comparison because I've been asked quite a bit from my Mustang family, which is my other family. Got my Subaru family, got the Mustang family. And uh, I'm happy to say I'm part of the Chevrolet Camaro family now. So hit that dislike button, hit the like button, whatever you feel comfortable doing, that's all good. We got, uh, we got love for everybody. So... This is a uh, 2016 Camaro SS. It is the two SS option. And basically what that gives you is just some more accents. Uh, it's still a lot of plastic in here. The interior's nicely done, at least the design part. But the materials, I mean, you're getting, you're paying for a 6.2 liter V8, 450 some out of horsepower. You're not paying for an Audi-like, Mercedes-like interior, right? So let's get that out of the way. Uh, but I will tell you this. I am extremely impressed with what Chevrolet has done. You know, I, I grew up a Subaru fan, Mustang fan, uh, Mazda RX-7 fan. And, and I can tell you, I, not, I didn't have anything against the Camaro itself. Uh, but it's just never been on my radar before until this body style, the Gen 6 and uh, I got the chance to drive one and just fell in love with the car I mean I am just impressed with what Chevrolet has done from the suspension to the sound you might be able to hear some of it bleeding through to the looks of the car they just they got it right you know and, and uh, I thought the same thing about the new Ford Mustang the S550 which was my previous car and uh, I didn't think I'd be able to get anything else but after driving this, I'm just blown away. You know, I didn't think uh, as far as American cars that are affordable, I should say, that I'd be able to find anything nicer than the S550 Mustang. If you don't recall or you didn't get to watch the update video I did a while ago about my Mustang, it was a 2015 Mustang GT with the performance package, which gave you the Brembo six piston calipers up front gave you the blacked out 19 inch wheels and a couple other things in there uh, so comparing that to this a lot of people have asked me you know what's it like how do you like it which one do you like better and uh, you know it, obviously because they've been competing with each other for so long a lot of people are curious right but you know I hate to say it uh, there's a lot of things that this car does really well and much better than the Mustang itself but there's also a lot of things I really loved about that Mustang that I still do that make it really hard for me to uh, uh, to say one's better than the other uh, let me tell you what I like about the Camaro itself what I really like about this car is is the power the low-end torque you know this LT1 engine just I mean it just comes alive uh, let me put it in manual mode here. I'm driving an automatic. It does have the 8-speed automatic. And uh, let me downshift to a gear that has a little bit of power here. Get it in the sweet spot. Uh, and, of course, I'm in the middle of traffic here in Atlanta, so there's really nowhere to go. But it's just any gear 
in this car it just sounds amazing I did get the dual mode exhaust uh, as an option which based on your driving habits or based on the driving mode you select there's four of them four not five four and uh, it'll give you two different sounds it also adjusts the suspension the steering feel it'll uh, adjust the interior LED lighting that you've got throughout there's some light it's hard to see in the daytime but there's lighting here above the navigation uh, radio bezel and there's some on the doors and uh, it just looks pretty amazing and when you change that driving style the colors will change there's different settings now that I'm stopped at the light I can kind of go over here first of all the navigation is super responsive right unlike the sync system in the four now if you got the sync three it's much better but this navigation blows almost any other as far as responsiveness that I've used before it's very fast very easy to use not a lot of features like some of the other systems that I've used where you can customize a lot of things but it's fast and to me that's more important than anything else the light strips you can come in here and adjust them any way you like so you can link it to the driving mode which you can change you can see just below the shifter right here you can change that to uh, track sport snow and ice and just touring if you're just hanging out and want it to be a little bit quiet let me put it on touring mode here and you know it's kind of hard to hear with the with the windows rolled up but it gets a lot quieter and this is really important to me in the mornings but anyways let's get back to the driving feel of that v8 right the 6.2 liter versus the 5 liter coyote I kind of felt like the Mustang, you really had to open it up in, in, in uh, you know, its natural form, right? Of course, there's force induction, a lot of other different things you can do to make that engine breathe better. But the way it comes stock, you have to get up in the RPMs, right? Kind of like the old, uh, you know, four-cylinder four turbo engines where, you know, anything between 1,000 RPMs, 3,500 RPMs, there's just not a lot there. Once boost kicks in, that thing takes off and I kind of felt like the Mustang reminded me of that a lot once I got in the upper RPMs you felt the power it would start pulling pretty hard you know, but below I mean even the dyno itself I had a dyno just to get a baseline uh, below like 3000 RPMs there just wasn't a whole lot I feel this car with the 6.2 liter it's obviously bigger right so you've got a larger displacement motor uh, but I just feel like it makes power throughout the entire power band. You, you feel that torque, you feel it go. And that was a big difference too. The Coyote, it was 435 horsepower and uh, you know a lot less torque, three something. I can't remember the number off the top of my head. I'll look it up and post it on the video. I'm sure you guys know it. Uh, and this one's pretty even. It's like 455 horsepower and 455 torque, I believe. So you've got a lot more torque. You've got a lot more low end grunt. Uh, and to me that just makes the car whether you're just c cruising coasting around or on the highway and need to pass uh, or you're getting on it right you're doing some spirited driving uh, it's just amazing in any range of the power band it's just absolutely amazing so I'm in love with the feel of the 6.2 liter LT1 motor now let's get to the suspension because to me I opted for the magnetic ride and that was the best investment I've had coilover suspension before you know from cheap ones to very expensive ones and I kind of feel like they even though they gave the car that handling the stance look that I was looking for you know that aggressive sporty look uh, it, it, it took away in other areas that made the cars fun to drive especially in traffic I use this car as a daily commuter so to me comfort technology all those things are really important uh, to be around right this one's got the nav as you can see this system is just so responsive uh, it really doesn't lag like a lot of other systems that I've used when you're typing in an address the other really cool thing that I love the most is the integration with Apple CarPlay and of course there's also Android Auto it has that built in there's even a wireless charger in between the seats back there that you can use with your Android phones. Apple, get with the program, would love to see the same thing. So anyways, you know, talking, going back to the suspension itself, the magnetic ride, depending on the driving modes, once again, it will adjust, it will stiffen up, you know, the obvious things, right? But the really cool thing to me 
is the dampening part of it, right? And, and also going over bumps, you know, when the car tends to lift, that's where the biggest difference with this suspension comes in. Normally on any other car, the car will lift naturally kind of float over with this suspension it just immediately tightens up so the car always stays flat it doesn't bounce up and down it doesn't lift when you're going over a bump and over really rough roads there's some pretty bad roads here in atlanta uh i'm just blown away i mean it's not a cadillac of you know your your grandparents 1970s cadillac by any means but it is extremely comfortable in touring mode the steering gets pretty soft the throttle gets a little lazy so it's not so aggressive uh, maybe i'm just imagining that part but i swear the throttle is not as responsive once you go into sport mode or track mode the steering feel is complete i feel like i'm dragging my hands on the pavement it really reminds me of my m3 i had back in the days i still think that car was so connected to the road i've never driven anything like it until i drove this car and the Mustang had something similar. I did not have the magnetic ride because that's only available in the GT350, which I didn't have. Uh, I don't know if that's an option now for the 2017 models that you can get in the GT, but at least at the time that I got my Mustang, that was not an option. But that's the part that's really impressive, right? The steering feel is just so connected to the road. Even though it's electronically assisted, GM, Chevrolet just have done an incredible job with the steering feel with the magnetic ride suspension by the way if you're considering getting one of these you know I know it's not always in everybody's budget or you may not see the need for or want to spend the money on it but if it's a commuter for you uh, I would definitely recommend it because when you want that really aggressive stiff suspension you got it when you just want to coast like I'm doing right now and you want it to be smooth and soft over bumps you've got that option as well so i definitely recommend doing that one of the biggest regrets that i have is that i didn't opt out for the six why well, i tried finding one and i just couldn't find the combination that i was looking for with the six piston brakes that is one of the things where i give a, a clear advantage to the mustangs brakes uh, at least comparing to this specific vehicle right i'm sure if i had the six six piston brembo brakes on this car I'd have a better indication which one's better but you know based on the two cars that I've owned the Mustang and this one and the way they were configured I really like the brakes much better in the Mustang there was just no no mushy feel you know it, it was just so stiff and whatever pressure you gave it the car gave back to you in return as far as how hard it gripped and braked this one you you know you have to get on these brakes even though these are four piston Brembo brakes all around I, I'm just I'm disappointed that's my only disappointment thus far in the in the brakes uh, or the car itself are the brakes right and I know there's a one LE package coming out wish I would have waited for that but you know I'm really impatient I drove the car really liked it and I went for it but you've got some options you can order you can spec out the six piston caliper brakes I would recommend that if you can or try to find one that has them already uh, and wait for the one LE package that's going to give you some additional cooling it's going to give you wider tires you get the 305s in the rear with the really cool uh, wheels and uh, some other you know like a matte uh, I don't know if it's vinyl wrapped or painted hood uh, a much cooler spoiler than the one I've got back here or rear deck spoiler so the one elite package pretty awesome i just i wanted to trade now i was ready to do the deal now they made me a really good deal on this car so i couldn't pass it up but there there's a lot of you know options as to which way you can configure the car and i would recommend that you do that so the steering amazing the suspension absolutely amazing i love love the magnetic right suspension i don't know that i'll ever own another car without it whether it's a chevy or whatever else i'm gonna try to find vehicles that have that because to me that makes it worth it a thousand times uh, and it just transforms the car it is super flat through the turns you know it's responsive when you attack the turns when you're braking really hard it doesn't nose dive you know it's reading like a thousand times per second or something crazy maybe millisecond i don't even know all i know is that it's crazy fast and um 
I don't know that I would want to own a car without it. And it has made this Camaro, uh, in my opinion, a thousand times better than I could have ever imagined, right? So very cool suspension, brakes are okay. Interior, hard plastics, just awful, awful, awful. But there's some leather inserts, I believe, with the 2SS package. It also adds dual climate control. This is one of my favorite features. My wife likes her car a little bit, you know, warmer or her side at least. She can do that over here. You just turn these big dials, which are really cool. The vents are some of the best that I've seen. The way that they close or open, super cool. You've got cool and heated seats. Got to have that. Atlanta is so freaking hot. You've seen some of my other videos or maybe you haven't. It's always hot. I'm always sweating no matter what I'm doing. It's humid. So I love the cool and heated seats. That was a must have option. And the dual climate control, another must have option. Also, one thing that I absolutely love and you probably cannot see from the video, there's a heads up display up here that displays. You can configure it multiple different ways. You can show the RPMs, G meter, the speed. When you got the navigation on, I love this feature. So if you're using the navigation to go somewhere, it'll actually display the distance that you have uh, and the turn coming up, which way left or right on here. You've got the other obvious things, of course, reverse camera with sensors in the rear. Visibility, let's talk about visibility. Some of the things that people are always complaining about with this car, let's put that to rest right now. Uh, the Mustang didn't have great visibility, but it was definitely not as bad as this car. And I don't know if the video does any justice, uh, but it's pretty bad, guys. You know, back there, big blind spots all over the place. The rear windshield is so small. You, you really just see like one lane, one and a half lanes back there. Uh, front visibility is not bad. I've got no issues there. But I'll tell you this, after four or five minutes of driving the car, it was a non-issue, like a complete non-issue for me. Uh, I think this Challenger next to me wants to race, but I'm a law-abiding citizen. Uh, so I will not engage in any illegal activities. Uh, I don't know if that's even an RT or anything. It looks just like a standard V6. So uh, no point in wasting gas or risking a speeding ticket or anything like that. Always obey traffic rules. Anyways, so as I was saying, visibility, it's really not a non-factor. You know, when I first got in the car, the first time I ever drove one of these, I'm thinking to myself, how the hell do people own this thing, let alone drive it around because I can't see anything it felt just awkward uncomfortable but you're it's like a tank and what i mean by that is that everything wraps around you the door sills come up really high to your shoulders you know the small windows all around give you like you're inside it but you feel really snug and tight inside of this thing and i love that feel now chevrolet added some things to help you out I, be, I don't I believe this is standard but I'm not sure in one in what models I know the 2ss uh, well at least this one came with the blind spot detections that's huge because it the mirrors are small visibility small so it's nice to know uh, if you have somebody next to you in your blind spots the car will tell you right so you've got the blind spot detection uh, which is really nice so the heads-up display keep you focused on the road you see all the critical and vital information right here and I just absolutely love that the tech is you know it's basic but it works really well guys you're gonna be very pleased with the system that's in here another question I get often is the sound system how's the Bose sound system uh, I think the shaker sound system in the Mustang was better personally you know because I'm I'm trying to answer some of the questions I've been getting from the Mustang family uh, and, and uh, you know people interested in this car they're you know they're okay the Bose sound system that comes with this uh, but I'm not impressed to be honest it says seven speakers I've played with the settings a little bit half the time it feels like I only have two six by nines like back in the 90s uh, on, on the doors and that's it I just don't hear a lot of range uh, but you know what uh, to me the part that I love the most uh, is the exhaust that's the only sound that I care about hearing that noise hearing that 6.2 liter roar roar rawr. anyways uh, you know I'm not too concerned with the sound system but it's there it's functional the Bluetooth pretty awesome I will say the Bluetooth connects very fast 
works really well better than any other system at least oem that i've used before so very pleased with that and again the carplay integration just amazing when you need to read text when you need to make calls play the radio it does it all automatically for you just by giving voice commands it also has its own built-in voice command and again it's got the android auto too right so up to you over here you've got of course power windows power door locks keyless uh, entry you've got push button start you've got remote start in the automatics which is really nice you know and that's one of the reasons you know that i chose the eight speed automatic it's a little bit quicker just because it can shift faster off the line this thing just goes like if it was all-wheel drive like my old subarus you know there's no drama there's not a lot of wheel spin it just goes it also has launch control which is very cool uh, you basically put it in sport or track mode you click on uh, the traction control button twice and you'll get a, a, a notification here in the information center screen letting you know that it's active and all you have to do is hold the brake and mash the gas down if you don't press it down it's going to start to try to move so you gotta mash it down that tells the car hey it's ready to go and uh, it'll rev up to 2000 rpms hold the rpms and then it goes like a rocket man i mean to me this car is just so much faster the mustang even though it had launch control it would struggle with wheel spin even in, in stock form uh, it would struggle pretty bad first second was a spin fest third you know sometimes you would catch it sometimes it would just spin so this thing off the line uh, you know, we've tested it against some of my buddies all-wheel drive Subarus with about similar horsepower and this thing's gone I mean, it's just pretty quick uh, For a stock vehicle. So very pleased with it. But again happy with the technology Suspension steering the handling. I never thought I would say this I mean the Mustang took me to a whole nother level as far as believing what what uh, you know what the American car companies are capable of because I've owned an m3 i've owned an rx7 you know these are all uh, cars that are known to be great in handling braking lightweight and so i always use that as my mark of what i want my next car to be able to do or achieve and the mustang surpassed all of those things now i will tell you one thing that's very different in the handling character characteristics of the vehicles as you know all-wheel drive cars naturally their neutral handling if anything they tend to push like a front-wheel drive car more so than rotate right oversteer uh, rear-wheel drive car naturally wants to oversteer right unless you're just really bad going into the turn you're probably going to plow you can do that with any car but they naturally tend to oversteer if you're mid-turn and you start rolling on the gas you don't have good tires or the rear is pretty light that rear end is going to start to come out and you're going to have to start doing some counter steering, whatever the case may be. Mustangs, as you've seen the thousands of videos on the internet, they're snappy. You know, when you catch that first second, that rear end goes one way. When you go to the next shift, it'll go the other way. And if you're not ready for that, if you've never driven, which to me, I think is what a lot of those videos are. People that have never been on a track, uh, people that maybe had a front wheel drive before or all wheel drive and are going to rear wheel drive for the first time It's kind of what I see from watching a lot of those Mustang crashes just inexperience uh, with rear wheel drive But the Mustang I will tell you was very snappy it, uh, it it just naturally wanted to kick out and so If you weren't careful, you know, you could you could be in serious trouble with the Mustang with this car the electronics i feel do an amazing job at letting you have some fun but not putting you in any real danger or at least helping you to get you know or helping you from not getting in any real danger and i'm just extremely impressed you can get on the gas pretty hard in sport mode through the turns and it'll grip you know the grip is amazing now that could be a lot of things you know corner entry it could be temperature of the tires it could be the tires themselves these tires to me are garbage they're the eagle f1s asymmetrics run flats right we all know although they might perform better it's probably not going to be i'm probably going to be looking at a set of uh, michelin super sport pilots my favorite tire uh, with something a little bit wider if i can find a set of those one elite wheels or something similar where i can put some 305s or something beefier in the back but 
the confidence that you have in the turns on the throttle I can tell you I would never have attempted that in my Mustang now the WRX you know what I loved about the, the car when I would autocross and you can check out one of my autocross videos in there is that I could easily you know full throttle through a lot of the corners and turns and just no drama in those cars all-wheel drive is like a cheater code right it just it makes you look much better as a driver than you really are at least in my case that was the case but the, the Camaro does the same thing that magnetic right suspension the grip the balance of the car the power delivery give you confidence in the turns as opposed to the Mustang where I kind of felt like any minute now this thing's gonna come out I better be ready to counter and, and, and uh, you know because the electronics were also pretty lazy they, they would probably allow you to drift a little too much uh, this thing keeps it a bigger eye on you a closer eye on you and then of course you can go to track you can disable more stuff if you're really crazy and brave and and want to push the limits or if you're at the track the only place you should be doing that at then uh, you can do that that's the beauty of it right so uh, all in all I highly recommend the car another thing I love is the sunroof Mustangs do not have a sunroof unless you get a convertible and you have no roof but that's nice I love that little feature you know I, I always ride with my sunroof open and I don't personally care for convertibles so this is kind of like the halfway in between uh, for for a, a happy medium back seats another question I get can you use them you know they're there can you fit two adults back there short ones like myself yes you probably could they're not gonna be comfortable I'm gonna have to push my seat pretty far forward as a driver so is the passenger uh, you could but again uh, it's it's more for insurance more for show more to throw your backpack back there than anything else uh, the Mustang had a pretty good sized trunk the Camaro does not you can fit two bags back there it's long but it's just not wide the opening is very narrow you know it's just not not a great not a great truck so thumbs down on the trunk space back seat again I wasn't expecting to be hauling you know four or five people in this car anyways so no big deal there but they're pretty useless same thing with the Mustang Mustang had a bigger trunk and uh, about the same size rear seats you know all fun and games or here comes the rain and uh, as always pretty fun to be in the rain but anyways leave me some comments you know questions anything that I can help you answer for those maybe thinking about going from a Mustang uh, to a Camaro or just looking at a Camaro there's a ton of other reviews out there much better than mine that I watched before I bought this car but I just kind of wanted to give you my perspective uh, on the car itself fuel economy I will say it's not terribly bad uh, I've averaged about 26 miles per gallon on the highway city driving I am averaging I'll tell you right now if I can get to it this is a hundred percent you know bumper to bumper as you can see Atlanta traffic I'm averaging about 15.4 and I think this is a good time to end this video because the rain's gonna make it really hard for you guys to hear anyways thanks for watching guys I've missed you hope I'll get some of you that you know back to comment like and uh, share your experiences or ask questions and I'll uh, try to catch you on the next video.